Yom Tov, good day. I'm Stephen Bruck. This is Messianic Moment Ministries, and I thank you for being here. Today's Shabbat reading is a pretty well-known story of rebellion. Korach, a Levite, jealous of Moses, organized other Levites, all leaders within their tribes, to rebel against Moses and Aaron and to appoint a different leader, who, of course, Korach thought would be himself. Meanwhile, Dathan and Abiram, from the tribe of Reuben, also led a rebellion against Moses for their failure to enter the land, having just been driven out by the inhabitants. Now Moses tells the men, a total of 250 of them, to bring their fire pans to the tent of meeting in the morning and God will show them what he wants. Moses also goes to the tents of Korach, Abiram, and Dathan and calls them out to tell them how God will handle this rebellion which isn't really against Moses and Aaron, but is against God. First though, Moses tells those whose tents are close to these men to move away from them because if they don't, they might suffer the same punishment that the rebels will have to undergo. Fortunately for them, the surrounding families listen. Moses then tells the rebels that if God hasn't placed Moses in charge, Abram, Dathan, and Korach will live long lives. On the other hand, if God is the one who put Moses in charge, then the earth will open its mouth and swallow these men and all they have, family, tents, and possessions, and send them to Sheol alive. Well, no sooner does Moses finish speaking than the ground splits open, and Abraham, Dathan, Korach, and their families and their tents are swallowed up, after which the ground closes over them. At the same time, fire comes out from the tent of meeting and totally incinerates all 250 men, being so hot that their brass offering plates are melted. Despite this obvious show of God's intervention and appointment of Moses and Aaron, the people are still in uproar and they actually blame Moses for the death of the men. God sends a plague among the people that starts to kill multitudes. But Aaron takes incense from the altar and goes into the crowd and stands between the people and the plague to stop it. Well, God then has the 12 tribal leaders each bring their staff to the tent of meeting, Aaron representing the Levites, and tells Moses to tell the people that the staff which grows buds will belong to the one who is God's choice for serving him as Cohen. In the morning, only one staff has buds on it, Aaron's staff, and more than buds, it has flowers and ripe almonds as well. This Parsha ends with God giving the instructions again regarding how the Kohen and Levite are to serve him and that they are to be paid from the tithes. Those of you who follow this ministry, thank you for being here. You know I rarely ever allow politics to enter these messages. However, when we look at what is happening in this Shabbat reading and what is happening in the U.S. today, there is such a direct relationship, I can't ignore it. The rebellion within the United States, with cities of two separate states declaring themselves as a sovereign entity, is exactly what happened to the nation of Israel under Moses. There is such a spirit of rebellion against legitimate authority that I would think Korak has found his way back up from Sheol. We have a president who was legally elected, yet since the very day he took office, there have been rebellions against his authority and position. And not just by outside forces, excuse me, mustache tickle, not just by outside forces, but by the leaders of states within the Union. Just like under Korak, or should I say Pelosi, Many important and powerful leaders of the tribes of America, in other words, congresspersons and senators, have taken up their fire pans and tried to oust President Trump with little more than weak and often, we found out later, manufactured stories claiming he was disqualified for office. 
today there are the, the Chad and the Chaz groups in their separate states who are declaring themselves free of the properly instituted authorities, such as the police. They've established zones of anarchy and proliferate violence as their means of control. In truth, they have no control. Hey, that is SOP within an anarchistic society. Sooner or later, the proper authority, which has been authorized by the Constitution, will remove the, these rebels and hopefully prosecute them in accordance with their illegal activities. You know, if God had not intervened on behalf of Moses and Aaron, it is very likely that the general populace would have gone along with Korach, Abraham, and David. What has been proven in the Bible, as shown by the Israelites, is that the crowd will follow whoever is popular or promises them what they want. We saw this at the sin of the golden calf in Exodus 32. We, we saw it with the Korach rebellion today, number 16. We saw it with their constant complaining, which caused God to send snakes. That's Numbers 21. And we saw it during the sin of Baal Peor, when Balaam had the Midianite women entice the men into sinful, blah, sinful behavior. That's Numbers 25. I mean, the people rebelled against proper authority. That, that would be God, of course. Times too numerous to mention here. From the very day they were freed from Egyptian bondage until the very day that they went into the Babylonian exile. America has been through some tough times before and came out of it stronger. But I, I'm concerned about what is happening to her today. The pandemic has shown that we are a society composed of easily frightened, easily duped, and easily led sheep. Now, yes, we know that people are like sheep, easily led astray. I mean, Isaiah told us that. But it is one thing to read about it in the Bible and quite another to see how true it is when people wear face masks and isolate themselves because they are told lies and exaggerations without questioning the truth of it. In common sense? Well, I mean, that's rare under any condition. But it is so rare today that it seems to be an extinct commodity. We need to remember, just as the Israelites we read about today were reminded, that God is in charge and that whoever is in charge legally was placed there by God. And we're told this in Romans 13. I'm gonna, let's see what the Romans 13 says. And this is from the complete Jewish Bible. Everyone is to obey the governing authorities. For there is no authority that is not from God, and the existing authorities have been placed where they are by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities is resisting what God has instituted, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. If people are dissatisfied with the leadership, there are legal means for removing the leaders, and those procedures should be followed. It takes longer than open rebellion, but it is the legal and correct way to oust a bad leader. In the meantime, we are obligated legally and spiritually to respect our leaders. Today's Parsha is so perfectly timed to what is happening in the U.S. today that you might even think God planned it. If you ask me, I don't think that what is happening is from God. On the contrary, it seems evident to me that this is the work of Satan. Our society has a spirit of Korach running rampant through it, and our legislative bodies have a spirit of Absalom taking charge of them. Rebellion, social unrest, lies, and false teachings abound. While the people show they are mindless sheep, blind to the truth, speechless against the evil, but you can't understand what they're saying through cloth mask anyway, and being led, dancing, to their own destruction. I'm afraid. I'm afraid for our country. I'm afraid for our economy. And I'm afraid for the people who claim to be doing what they do to save lives while what they are doing is refusing to acknowledge that, hey, the emperor is not wearing any clothes. And more than anything else, I'm afraid and concerned about how so many people can so blatantly disobey the law and get away with it. And I don't mean just the rioters in the streets, but the elected leaders of our cities, states, and our federal government, 
whose members are sworn to defend the Constitution. I don't know how all this will turn out. I don't know if we will have a new normal or if we will even ever be able to return to the old normal. But I trust in God to get us through it, and we'll wait patiently on the Lord. Although I have to say, I am so fed up with all this Michigas. Whew. Well, thank you for being here. And please, subscribe, click the icons here, go back to the website, click the subscribe button in the right margin there, and share these messages with others. And while you're on the website, check it out. Look at some of my, you know, personal things I have on the picture album. There's some things you might find enjoyable that I, I share my personal life with you. And um, also, check out my books. I'm writing my fourth book. I'm, I'm going to be doing that uh, starting now, which is going to be called um, the I Don't Want to Read the Bible, Bible. Anyway, until next time, the Hitrot and Baruch Hashem, Shabbat Shalom.